Hey everybody, it is Mr. Getz, and we're looking at the book Learning Audio Video Production. And this book was published, I believe, in, what are we at here, 20, 2016, 2017, so 2017. And we're gonna be looking at chapter two in the book. And chapter two is called Investigation and Exploration. One thing that I've kind of seen in, in working with my students is it's not about the projects we're doing and the deadlines and the rubric. It is more investigation and exploration to find out what kind of activities and work we're gonna do. So what we see here is somebody with headphones on with a keyboard, and then we also see a laptop, a mixer, some speakers, and then also see a microphone over here. So this is a typical setup for composing music on a computer. So this chapter talks about the history and evolution of audio video production, creative vision, accuracy counts, writing and formatting a screenplay or script, talks about copyright, soundtrack and score, ethical use of someone's work, post-production incorporating audio, and then there's a end of chapter activity. So some of this, uh, I'm just gonna cut through the fog and go through this really quickly. The history and evolution of audio and video, the punchline is typically, you can do all of this on a phone now, which is amazing. Creative vision, that's having an idea before you go in and start doing something, which is tied to writing and formatting a screenplay or script. So the biggest thing about creative vision and also about writing is sometimes you're planning, sometimes you're writing, and then sometimes you're doing. So knowing which area you're in, if it's the planning phase where you're writing, or if it's the doing phase where you've switched over to actually doing production. That's the main thing with both of these here. Accuracy, you usually want to make sure that what your story is about is, is, tied, to, is tied to the truth from the person's perspective who is making it. And I'm just gonna keep going on here. So this chapter explains how to draft the technical documents that serve as a blueprint for the project. So over here on the right, it talks about nothing. At the bottom, it talks about hieroglyphs. So this was a way of communication uh, years ago. Um, and on the bullet shot right here in the matrix, that was a shot that moved 360 degrees around a character during a freeze frame. So that's kind of a uh, new uh, concept that had been used in filmmaking. So it says the matrix in 1999. Here's some of the hieroglyphs that we talked about. So what these symbols mean and how the civilizations were, were communicating and telling their stories, that's changed. So how we tell our stories, a lot of folks say now that the MFA, the Master of Fine Arts, is the new MBA. So the new Master of Business Administration is now a Master of Fine Arts. And what that means is, is that the commodities we exchange today are no longer products and businesses, they're now of the, of the art realm. So now we're dealing in the commodities and the exchange of information. Right? So this picture that's mentioned here, so led to the invention of the first camera by Joseph Nepesse in 1826. This picture, you can go see it at the Harry Ransom Center at the University of Texas. That's where that first photograph is. So here's a camera obscura, which was an early photograph. So the invention of, of motion. So with this here, there was a bet uh, to see if when a horse was running, it had all of its feet, uh, all of its hooves off the ground at the same time. Let's keep going here. So we talk about, everybody knows from math, X, Y, X and Y axis, but this is the Z axis. The Z axis is coming in and out. So some of the stuff that we're able to do in class is actually 3D. It says title cards down here. I've never really liked the term title cards. So it says, during this time, filmmakers used the camera simply as a recording device and dialogue was delivered via the use of written title cards. That's just a graphic. That's just words on the screen. So a fancy name for it is title card, okay. Um, this is another film here, Trip to the Moon from 1902. So a lot of this was when you could actually do things that weren't possible in real life. It was special effects. So it was early, early special effects that, 
that were being done with film. And it says one of the first attempts to cover a film frame by frame by hand. So now you can shoot on your iPhone, bring it into Premiere, export the export still images. So it's typically 12, 24, or 30 frames per second. Export the still images. Then you can do this in Photoshop. So to, to color and draw over a film. So this right here, uh, controversial uh, pioneer. So it talks about the film Birth of a Nation. When I talk about this page here, it is the case that statues are for the ideology that won and the quote unquote uh, groups that had, had lost a war, there is not really any recognition lots of times in, in history. Uh, so um, what this story uh, talks about is it is a, a very, very, very hated film because it's, it's political. So it's, it's political and uh, to the point of uh, propaganda. So the stories that we tell and the way we tell the stories, we have to be uh, very serious about uh, keeping if they're, if they're accurate and even going so far as looking at what, what hate speech is and digital citizenship and, and bullying as well, but it's a, a point in history. So it depicted the origin of the KKK in a heroic light and sparked massive protests. On this page over here, uh, just talks about 1927 was the first film that used sound, synchronized sound. So that was 1927, the jazz singer. Okay, rise of the studio system. So what I like to say about this page is that Francis Ford Coppola wanted to be a one person studio. Never quite did that, but Robert Rodriguez right here in Austin did do that being a one-person studio. So this is how you have something that you've, you've shot and then having it played somewhere. So when we talk about vertical monopoly and limiting competition from newcomers and how many movie theaters there were, and it's like if the, if the studio owns the sound stage and the studio owns the connection to the talent, the studio owns the distribution, they're pretty much controlling the whole channel of communication and the profit. So this right here, the biggest takeaway is things used to be four by three like this, and then went to 16 by nine when we started shooting uh, in high definition. And that's also turn your phone sideways when you shoot video, right? So these are three standard aspect ratios. So right here it talks about current trends, creative vision. So when it says right here, what that does not mean, it doesn't mean you shouldn't have a vision. So as a creator, it should be clear, at least with yourself, what you want your work to do once it's out in the world. Do you want to share it with only your closest family and friends? With that, we can put stuff password protected on Vimeo, have private links, right? Are you hoping it will go viral online, right? So this talks about some different types of uh, strategies and different types of, of goals here where you might want your project to be seen in the end. And when we look at just the project at the end of this chapter, the project is about a PSA. And what I've been sharing with students is with, in doing a PSA, you kind of have three different ways you can do the PSA. One of them is a public service announcement. One is to say, I'm an artist, I wanna make what I want. Second is to ask other people, say, hey, what's important in the community? What should we make a public service announcement about? What needs more attention? The third, is to get online, start Googling it, start researching it, see what the research says, see what other people are saying out there. So that are th those are three different strategies for doing a creative vision and also starts to feed into uh, accuracy. So in accuracy, it talks about propaganda here and then it talks about assumptions. So an assumption is something that's accepted as true even if there is no factual proof. And I think another part of this is if we look at, if we look at fear and I think that if somebody fears something that isn't an actuality or isn't real, it doesn't mean that fear doesn't exist, right? So that's a, that's a big concept. So where am I getting my facts from? Why do I consider this source to be trustworthy? So this talks a little bit more about uh, journalism. So these are some different journalistic entities. So National Public Radio, 
You can listen at 90.5, KUT Austin, right? PBS, we have a relationship with the student reporting labs uh, with uh, PBS. We've been down to South by Southwest. We've been down to South by Southwest before with PBS. New York Times, Reuters. So this talks about a treatment, right? So the treatment is what your, what your story is. So it is a list of scenes and a short summary of what happens in each scene. So this is the planning stage. So developing your main character. So El Mariachi, and that was a character who went from a singer to being a mercenary. So Neo in the Matrix was a geeky hacker and then he turned into a cyber uh, superhero. So these are different uh, characters. So the character arc is the journey the character goes through. The theme is the, the big idea that's planning. So troubleshooting, I don't know. I mean, if it's set on the moon, then you have to figure out how to troubleshoot and make that work, right? There's a proper format for a screenplay. So we went to Austin Film Festival and there's a lot. Of, the Austin Film Festival is a writer's festival. So took seven students last year, took four students this year, and it's a writer's conference. They talk about how to do screenplays. So the components of the screenplay, you have a scene heading, scene description, transition, and communication. So this is stuff that if you like to write, this is a way to put your writing into a format that a filmmaker can use to go out and shoot, to go out and make it. And it starts with interior. Are we inside or outside? Okay, interior. What are we inside? We're in a corrugated metal shack. What time of day is it? Is it day, is it night? Those are the main things that you have at the beginning of, of your script here. So transitions. This is all stuff to dig into if you're interested in writing. If you're not interested in writing, then you're just going on to the next thing, right? So not, so everybody doesn't have to do every single thing in here. And another way to do a script is to just say, this is the audio, this is the video. So I have audio on one side, video on the other. That's commonly called a two column script. So know your rights in terms of copyright. If it isn't something you made, then you, need to ask permission from the copyright holder. So there are no friends in copyright. There is Creative Commons, there is kind of a, a copy left uh, movement that's happening out there. There's a YouTube music archive that we talked about in class, soundimage.org. Different ways to, to, to know what can be used and uh, derivative works can be created from. It all comes from back in the day, the, the rip, mix, burn philosophy, which was ripping CDs changing stuff around with it, and then burning it, uh, in essence, releasing it again to the public. So copyright versus plagiarism, what this is is quote your source. So most students will already be familiar with the concept of plagiarism, which is presenting somebody's, somebody's work as your own without citing the source, but copyright infringement is theft and it might be considered a crime if it could detract from the copyright holder's ability to make money. From the product. So this is something we do in class right here. All right, so this is, this is, oh, so what it says right here, OST, original soundtrack, whatever. Like, what is that acronym? Like, okay, OST, great. So some stuff in here, I'm just kind of like, uh, we're gonna, you know, be memorizing all this. Okay, what, yeah. Uh, so there is a, a soundtrack and a score. This is the different flavors of music to put with your video. Don't take your favorite song at the time because your favorite song now doesn't need your video. Your favorite song stands alone. Make a video and then find music that fits with it using different types of music. Here's an orchestra that is actually creating a, a score or a soundtrack for a film. Forrest Gump, that soundtrack was on three audio cassettes. Kind of introduced a lot of people to the music of the 60s and 70s. Spotting cues, I don't care. Cue sheet, I don't care. Working with a composer. If we have somebody who's a composer, let's talk to them about what they like and how to work with them, right? Temporary track's a good thing because in doing wedding video, it's good to put a, a music track in and then not pay the $60 for the licensing until you know that the client likes it and you're gonna use it. Intellectual property is an idea, a licensing agreement. I talked about somebody who shot Tony Romo's wedding at Hyatt Lost Pines in Bastrop and put a Coldplay song with it and they settled for almost a six-figure amount. 
it's pretty rough. Festival rights, had a student that entered something in South by Southwest. I wasn't gonna pay for the music rights until we knew that it was, that it was accepted. Fair use, so if it's for non-commercial, which we are, uh, the work you're copying must be relevant to what you're creating, okay? Uh, the amount of what you're copying shouldn't be the entire thing, and then it must have, it must not detract from the copyright holder's ability to make a profit from it. There are royalty-free things, things that are in the public domain. I mentioned Creative Commons a little bit earlier. Building up audio, layering audio. Uh, media release, so signed release is the legal consent that gives you authorization to to use somebody's footage. If they're a minor, it has to be an adult or a parent or guardian. Here's some of, I think this is Adobe. Oh, this is Avid Media Composer. We don't have Avid Media Composer. We have Adobe Premiere for video, and then we also have Adobe Audition for sound. So here's, they don't call it Foley, but these are sound effects. They talk about atmospheric sound. So different things in sound design is feet shuffling, pages of a book turning. Right, so we have pages of a book, and that's, that's fully worked. So this is kind of like radio drama as well, doing this type of stuff for sound design. Then here we have ambient sounds. Talk about sweetening, so sweetening is making the audio sound better. We keep our audio between negative six and negative 12, so this is where the audio levels are gonna be. Checkerboard audio clips, I've never used that phrase before. Why memorize stuff like we won't use? Keyframes are great though. So a keyframe is a point in time and a value. You'll use keyframes quite a bit. And then here's bringing the audio envelopes, so bringing the audio up and down. You wanna record room tone. So room tone is when you're shooting a video and you say, all right, we're gonna get 15 seconds of room tone. Go. And everything's quiet for 15 seconds because when you're editing, you can't have nothing in there. So if you're, cutting, if you're cutting audio together and you have a gap, that gap needs to be filmed, that needs to be filled with room tone. So what this says is if you hear any gaps or voids in audio, edit in some room tone with fades overlapping the audio around it. And then we get to the project here. So this is the, the public service announcement was the project at the end of this chapter. That's chapter two in learning audio video production. My name is Mr. Getz. Thanks for watching.